What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Richard on Data. And if this is your first time here, my name is Richard and this is the channel where we talk about all things data, data science, statistics, and programming. So subscribe for all kinds of content just like this if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a video. So it's been a little while actually since I have made a video, but I want to talk about one question that has come up a lot throughout the years in the data science world, which is if data science is so hot and it is, as people call it, the sexiest job of the 21st century, why is it so hard to get a data science job? This is certainly an experience that a lot of people have run into. and. In fact, we're just sort of coming out of this period of the great resignation where people are sort of hopping more than they ever have been in the past from one job to another, which includes data science. But with upcoming fears in the current macro environment of things like hiring freezes and layoffs and things like that, I suspect this question is going to come up a little bit more going forward. So I want to talk about, for a lot of people, they really have a hard time finding a data science job and it's not necessarily their fault. So we're going to talk about why that why that is and things that you can do to make it easier to get that data science job, which you're going to apply regardless of whether the macro environment is good or bad. All right, so the very first thing that we're going to talk about here may be a little blunt, but I think it is something that you need to be very honest with yourself about. And it's that you just may not have all the skills that you need to break into data science. Or alternatively, you may have skills, but you're finding it difficult to find a job that is a fit and that is appropriate for the skills that you do have. And that's a separate topic that we'll touch on in a little bit here. But I think it's appropriate first to just start with a refresher on some of the skills that data scientists out there actually have. And so this behind me is an article from KD Nuggets. They do all kinds of good polls and surveys and studies about the pool of data science talent and, and the market out there. And this article is a couple years old, but to the best of my knowledge, nothing here has really changed. The big picture here is, is still the same. And so some of the top skills that data scientists are reporting that they have, or at least that they want, are Python, probability and statistics, data visualization, math, critical thinking, whatever that means, uh, data cleaning or data prep or ETL, which is definitely something that you're going to spend a lot of time doing in an applied data science a job. And so the main point here is, let's say you're somebody who has only a few of these skills. It is really going to help you to pick up some new skills. And I have a video that I made all about a study pathway for data scientists where I recommend you start with probability and statistics, then you learn SQL next, then you learn one of Python or R. And R isn't actually listed in this top set of skills, but it is definitely going to increase your employability prospects and open up some doors for you. And ultimately the most important thing is to learn skills, even if you're not necessarily learning them in that particular order. But again, the most important thing is if there are certain deficiencies that you have and certain skills that you're lacking, it is really going to help you out to focus on yourself first and to build up those skills. And I understand if you're not already in the data science job market, that can be a little bit challenging, right? The very best way that you can possibly learn a new skill is to learn it in an applied project that you're doing in a business context. But there are certainly other resources available. If you're enrolled in college, that's, that's a good opportunity. There are tons of courses out there. There's all kinds of free resources if you don't want to go all the way of something that's paid. And you can, you can read books out there. And once you start learning new things, try and put these things into practice in some kind of project, whether that's in a Kegel setting, maybe even a uh, freelance project. So ultimately, the more that you know, the better off that you're going to be. Now, having said all of that, if you're somebody who has any skills at all, there are things that you can do with those skills. And so, sort of by definition, the data science job market is sort of going to demand that you have multiple skills. That's just kind of the nature of the beast. Now, there are jobs out there that demand that you be perfect unicorns, and you really shouldn't worry about those regardless of your skill level. But 
Now, I look at data science as the intersection between statistics, programming, communication, and business or domain knowledge. Now, granted, everybody's going to have a little bit of deficiency in at least one of those areas. Maybe you have weaknesses in two or even three of those areas, but there are still jobs that you can look for that match the skills that you have. So this is an article here from Towards Data Science, and I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but honestly, I think every single one of these has at least some kind of overlap with the skills that you use in the day-to-day -day in data science. And so just to go through one example here, let's suppose you're somebody who maybe you don't know Python, but you do know R. You're a little bit weak on machine learning, but you know a lot of conventional probability and statistics and maybe even things like survival analysis or biostats or epidemiology and things of that nature. It may just be appropriate for you to look for a job titled statistician and just not sweat the difference between what's a statistician and what's a data scientist. Similarly with like a business analyst, maybe you're somebody who communicates pretty well, you know data visualization, you know the particular business that you're trying to go into, but you're a little bit weaker on the technical and mathematical stuff. A business analyst may be a perfect starting point for you. And from that point, like I said, there is going to be overlap here between these roles and a traditional data science role. And so it could be a good starting point for you just to find a job like this, build skills up there, maybe try and leverage opportunities you have in a job like one of these to learn new skills and then leverage that towards becoming some kind of data scientist or maybe even senior data scientist down the road. And so now I want to shift gears away from talking about the skills that you have to being able to properly communicate those skills because I think this is something that a lot of data scientists really struggle with. That's actually the very next point in this article and there's another article here from Towards Data Science that does a pretty good job laying out the fact that even people with master's and PhD level education, this is something that they really struggle with because the things that are important in business is a really big shift away from the things that, that you spend your day to day thinking about and doing in the academic world. And so in the business world, nobody cares really at all about this amazing, uh, beautiful XG boost model that you created and uh, just how technically sophisticated it is. They care about how that provides value to their business and increases the revenue of that business. Sorry to be blunt about it, but it, it really is the truth. And so a technique that I really recommend for just about anybody is what's known as the storyboard technique. And that means you're telling a story about the things that you've done in the past. It starts with just providing an overall view of the landscape. So a 30,000 or 10,000 feet uh, view of the business and the context. Then you move into the specific problem that you're trying to solve, the solution that you came up with to that problem, and then the impact. And now in, in a lot of circumstances, it's not possible to lay out every single one of these things. And that's especially difficult if you're coming uh, fresh out of school. Um, it's a lot more difficult to talk about things like Kaggle projects or projects that you've worked on in school. But this is definitely a mindset that you want to be thinking about, especially if you're somebody who already has experience out there. You're not just fresh out of school. But just speaking more broadly here and going beyond just what these different job titles call themselves, there is just a huge breadth of different skills out there in the data science world. And so it's really impossible for you to be qualified for every job that's out there. You really do need to put in the effort and find a job that's appropriate for you. And that goes for any kind of skill level, even if you want to stick to strictly jobs that call themselves data scientists. And so that means really reading the descriptions of these jobs before you apply to them, figuring out, does it look like this is an appropriate fit for you? Maybe even something that you could do is if you're searching for a job on something like LinkedIn or Indeed or something like that, let's say you know SQL or R and you want to lean into those skills, search for SQL data scientist or R data scientist and just, just see what you find. And so now I want to shift gears away from talking about the skills that you have to being able to properly communicate those skills, because I think this is something that a lot of data scientists really struggle with. That's actually the very next point in this article. And there's another article here from Towards Data Science that 
does a pretty good job laying out the fact that even people with master's and PhD level education, this is something that they really struggle with because the things that are important in business is a really big shift away from the things that, that you spend your day to day thinking about and doing in the academic world. And so in the business world, nobody cares really at all about this amazing, uh, beautiful XG boost model that you created and uh, just how technically sophisticated it is. They care about how that provides value to their business and increases the revenue of that business. Sorry to be blunt about it, but it, it really is the truth. And so a technique that I really recommend for just about anybody is what's known as the storyboard technique. And that means you're telling a story about the things that you've done in the past. It starts with just providing an overall view of the landscape. So a 30,000 or 10,000 feet uh, view of the business and the context. Then you move into the specific problem that you're trying to solve, the solution that you came up with to that problem, and then the impact. And now in, in a lot of circumstances, it's not possible to lay out every single one of these things. And that's especially difficult if you're coming uh, fresh out of school. Um, it's a lot more difficult to talk about things like Kaggle projects or projects that you've worked on in school. But this is definitely a mindset that you want to be thinking about, especially if you're somebody who already has experience out there. You're not just fresh out of school. So again, you do need to proactively sell the skills that you have. And a lot of that really comes down to focusing not on the theoretical or technical aspects of the work that you have done, but on how those things can add value to a business or to, to different business problems. And a related issue to this, it's different, but it is related, is really being able to sell yourself. So again, that means speaking to the skills that you have, being confident in the skills that you have. Even if you aren't truly confident, there is at least some, some truth to the old cliche that you fake it until you make it. And so how you communicate and talk about yourself really, really makes a difference. But then creating a portfolio. This is something that especially a lot of inexperienced uh, people trying to get into data science don't do. And even if you start with a very super simple, basic GitHub portfolio with a few things that you did in college, anything is better than nothing and shows that you're making strides in the right direction. So the final point I'm gonna talk about in this video, it's another aspect of a, a typical data science interview process, has to do with them giving you an assessment. And so what I'm specifically referring to here is not whiteboarding sessions, which that's something separate that you may have to do, but rather your interviewer gives you some kind of take home assessment. So it's some kind of business problem, usually of a machine learning a context, and they ask you to put some solution or some model together, and then you'll send it back to them. And often at the end, you have to give some kind of presentation on it. So this is a pretty common practice, and it is something that a lot of people struggle with. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret with these things, just having done a lot of these myself and having been on the other end, having done multiple of these uh, and seeing other people submit them. A lot of data science and HR departments who go through this process have no idea what they're doing. I say that because a lot of them often give you absolutely unrealistic estimates of how much time it'll take. Like they may tell you it'll take two or four hours and then by the end of the day it takes 10 to 15 hours. And it may be a pretty technically competent person who goes over and reads these, but they don't really actually know what they're looking for when they're trying to evaluate you. And so another thing that, that they won't tell you is that a lot of people, they just can't get through these at all. That is, some people will just filter themselves out of the process because they'll go look for another job that's not asking them to do a take-home assessment just to, just to try to save time that way. But then there's a lot of people who just cannot get through these things at all and they just turn in solutions that are terrible. And so I say this in part for motivational reasons, just to inspire you, just get through this assessment. And so it may be helpful for you to pick up a book like say hands-on machine learning with uh, scikit-learn or uh, r for data science or a book like that and find a similar problem that's out there maybe copy some code chunks here and there and work with them 
organize your 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 thoughts and the work that you've done and your solution into a notebook because they may also try to gauge your presentation skills and again if if they're good for you that's another thing that's going to set you apart so again it all comes down to if you have some kind of take-home assessment just do your research find solutions out there that are similar and try and work work with those if you don't know what you're doing and just get through this because it really does turn into a numbers game if you do enough of these i promise you eventually you're going to move forward in one of the processes you're going through so I think these are some overarching reasons people sometimes struggle to find a data science job, which have been true even in the case of the relatively good macro environment that we've been in for the last decade or so, and the whole true maybe even more so, even if we're to go into a slower macro environment. And so what I would encourage somebody who's trying to break into data science is that, again, you don't want to be somebody, unless you're in a super desperate personal situation, you don't want to be somebody who's just applying every single place where there's an opening. Because quite frankly, there's all kinds of jobs out there that are not going to be appropriate for you. That's not, that's not a you problem. That's just a nature of the market that we're in and how just broad and diverse data science can be. So again, I, I wanna stress a point that I made earlier in the video, which is you really want to focus on yourself and develop yourself. The more that you've done that, the more experience you've gained and the more skills you have, the easier this is going to get. And once you, once you really break into data science the first time, it just gets easier from there. You just need to do it and then you're gonna be in good shape from there on out. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, once again, smash the like button. Leave me a comment down below and let me know, did you have a difficult time breaking into data science? Are you going through some of those struggles right now? Let me know. Then I'll see you all in the not so distant future. Until then, Richard on data.